Mastery of Snowflake scripting is an essential technical skill if you are aspired to be a Snowflake data engineer or a data lead or an architect or even a data engineering manager. This powerful scripting tool empowers you to build a stored procedure to automate some of your repetitive tasks or build complex ETL or ELT data pipeline when used with a stream and task and many more such utilities as well as anonymous block with ease. Some may view a stored procedure as an anti-pattern or bad practice in data engineering workload design. But in the legacy ETL world, there are many data and administrative workload written in a stored procedure that must be migrated as is. Without mastering Snowflake scripting, achieving this on Snowflake as your target cloud data warehouse platform is nearly impossible. Don't ignore this crucial skill. It is essential for smoothly handling legacy to Snowflake data migration projects. And that's the purpose behind this YouTube playlist. It covers everything you require to understand and become proficient in working with Snowflake scripting. This chapter will start with Snowflake scripting introduction, followed by chapters that will cover block structures, how to handle variables, return a value using Snowflake scripting, different type of loop support in Snowflake scripting, use of cursor and result set, exceptional handling, conditional logic, and finally troubleshooting. So welcome back to my channel, Data Engineering Simplified. I will be using the free trial enterprise edition of Snowflake on AWS for this video. You can test all the SQL script used in this tutorial in free trial edition. Refer to the description below for details or downloadable content. For optimal video clarity, ensure that you are watching this video in its highest resolution, which is 4K. If you wish, you can also speed up playback rate to 1.25x or 1.5x to learn faster. You can jump to a specific chapter. The chapter detail is available in the description below or move your cursor to the chapter marking in the video bar. For discussing specific SQL challenges, design issues, or architectural pattern, or any other feedback or a new topic request, you can connect with me in two simple ways. Send a direct message on my Instagram or join my exclusive Facebook group. To join the Facebook group, simply scan the QR code shown on the screen. And yes, if you are a dedicated Snowflake professional looking to enhance your skill in more structured manner, Explore my premium Udemy courses to conquer your fear and level up your Snowflake expertise. So let's start. So what to expect from this free and complete Snowflake SQL scripting course? Snowflake scripting is an extensive subject and each of this aspect may require one or more chapter and that's how this playlist is designed. When each of this chapter is further extended, the Snowflake scripting syllabus looks like this. The entire syllabus is divided into 11 distinct parts and each part or a section has important topic that are very crucial for a Snowflake developer to understand. So this video is part of the introduction where we are going to discuss about Snowflake scripting history, the role of Snowflake scripting in stored procedures and then we will follow the stored procedure as anti-pattern. Next, we are going to cover a Snowflake scripting block structure where we understand how the Snowflake scripting needs to be structured, what all are the optional and must section, block with stored procedure and anonymous block, and then also we will try to see the compilation and debugging issues and its behavior in SnowSQL. In the third part, we are going to cover variables which will primarily focus how to declare variable in Snowflake scripting what all the different data types supported by Snowflake scripting, how to use it in expressions and in a scripting statement, SQL statement, how to understand the binding concept, object identifier concept and written keyword. And finally, we'll try to understand the scope at block level and nested block level. In the fourth part, we are going to discuss returning a value from a stored procedure or from anonymous block using Snowflake scripting and also understand different type of return values and its limitations. On fifth part, we are going to cover the conditional logic, which will cover your if else statement and case statement. 
within the case statement we will understand simple case statement and searched case statement in the part 6 of this playlist that will cover loops which primarily discuss and in that loop section we are going to discuss for loop while loop repeat loop and loop loop how to terminate a loop using break exit and continue and iterate statement and we will see execution control after loop termination going to the outer loop or going to the inner loop these are very important concept and if you are trying to solve a complex use case or a scenario you need to really really master loops because this has an impact on your snowflake scripting performance in the chapter 7 we are going to discuss about a very common concept called cursor and we will see how to define and declare a cursor how to fetch the query result inside a cursor and how to iterate and loop a cursor then we will also touch upon a topic called result set and we will see how to access a result set and we'll see the difference between cursor and the result set in the part 9 we will understand the exceptional handling understand how to define exceptions how to raise exception how to handle them including implicit object and raising the same exception in the part 10 we will understand the keyword called execute immediate and execute immediate from and finally in the chapter 11 we will understand and learn the troubleshooting concept and what all features are available provided by snowflake to troubleshoot a snowflake scripting either as a part of stored procedure or as a part of anonymous blog using global variables and query id so that's how we are going to cover all the important aspect of snowflake scripting through these 11 chapters let's talk when snowflake scripting feature was added snowflake scripting was first made available in march 2022 release and snowflake's official release note says snowflake scripting is an extension to snowflake sql that adds support for procedural logic you can use snowflake scripting to write stored procedure in sql before the introduction of snowflake scripting a Snowflake data developer had an option to use JavaScript, Python, Java or Scala programming construct to create a stored procedure. It's a challenging to explain why Snowflake did not initially make Snowflake or SQL scripting available. However, as Snowflake recognized that the majority of the legacy workload developed in stored procedure using SQL scripting, it decided to make this feature available within Snowflake. This move has significantly simplified the legacy to Snowflake migration process, especially for those following the lift and shift approach. So now you know how important the Snowflake scripting for a Snowflake developer. If you understand this well, you will have a great chance to participate in important data engineering project. It doesn't matter whether your Snowflake instance is on AWS, Azure or GCP cloud, or if you have the standard enterprise business critical or VPS edition. The Snowflake scripting feature is equally available in all versions and does not vary based on your edition or cloud instance. If you are not sure, when to write a stored procedure using Snowflake scripting or unable to find an idea, let's discuss a couple of them before diving into our tutorial. Here is an example of a stored procedure written in JavaScript shown on the left side of the screen and the same logic is written in Snowflake SQL scripting shown on the right side. We don't need to go deep inside the logic, but both these stored procedures perform the same operation and return the same result. But if you pause and look into the both the script, the SQL based script looks much simpler, easy to understand and cleaner. Even a business analyst can tell what's happening in this logic. It is obvious that if you and your team member are more comfortable using SQL script and don't want to bring another tech stack in your data project, going with Snowflake scripting is a natural choice. JavaScript or Java or Scala bring a lot of flexibility while writing stored procedures in Snowflake. But it also adds additional complexities to your data project. It also does not get compiled when stored procedures are created. It is done 
when it is executed having a call keyword. However, the Snowflake is scripting if there is any syntax error during the creation of the stored procedure, the Snowflake engine will throw compilation error and this is a huge advantage and saves a lot of development and execution effort. Let's discuss our first scenario. This scenario is very commonly found in most of the Snowflake projects. Let's say you have to onboard a user in your Snowflake platform and perform following steps. Create a user with the default password and also check if user had been created in the past or exist. Assign a role to the user. Create a new schema as a workspace for this user. Clone tables from production schema to the user's workspace schema. Update an audit table about user's onboarding. If you are an administrator of a large data platform and if this process has to be repeated almost every day, these multiple SQL statements can be wrapped inside a stored procedure as an atomic unit and add parameterization including exception handling so, so you can repeat this process as many times as needed and save a lot of human effort and without any error. If the same process needs to be extended when a user is onboarded from the Snowflake platform or if you have to onboard many developers at the same time, such scenarios can be addressed with the use of stored procedures. Let's talk about another case where we need to archive data from one or a multiple tables from the production environment based on a cutoff date or a duration. The cutoff date or a duration is not fixed and this information is provided by the business team. It could be 7 days or a 10 days or a 30 days. As a development team or as a support team member, you don't have the necessary privileges or grants on this production table since they are business critical data set. The project owner wants to make sure that any direct delete grant should not be given to these data set and restrict it to only the project owner or a business team. To handle a scenario like this where you have to perform some complex checks and execute a bunch of SQL statement including error handling and rollback strategy in case of a failure, the stored procedures comes to rescue us. The stored procedures allows us to provide grant control by giving execution mechanism where it can be invoked with the caller's privileges or owner's privileges. Let's talk about our third scenario. You want to build a data pipeline using task and task tree and you have bunch of transformation and audit requirement that needs multiple SQL statements to be executed from one or all the task. We all know that task support only single SQL statement and if this is your requirement where multiple SQL statement to be invoked, you need to wrap your multiple statement SQL logic inside a stored procedure and then call that stored procedures from your task. And that's how this scenario can be handled using stored procedures. There is no other way that you can manage it. We can talk about our fourth and the last scenario where you have a stream object that are capturing your CDC data by task or a task tree. And you have a specific case where your tasks are not consuming all the CDC rows and some of the data set is left within the stream object. In such scenario, at one point of time, the stream object will get in stale state as your task logic is not consuming all the data set from the stream object. There is no way to reset the status other than recreating the stream object and that is a cumbersome task to manage. To address this kind of issues, you have to write multiple SQL statement in your task where you will first create a temp table, consume all the stream CDC data by loading it into a temp table first and then process the required data and commit the transaction. And by this way, you will not have any CDC data in your stream object and stream object will never get into a stale state. So we have no other choice than wrapping all these multiple SQL statement inside a stored procedures. And that is how 
the stored procedure help us to solve this problem. Similarly, there are many scenarios where relying on a stored procedure is essential and Snowflake scripting proves incredibly useful for automating manual steps and addressing many technical challenges in Snowflake. Now, you might be wondering, can't all this be achieved using a stored procedure written in JavaScript or Python or Java or even Snowpark? The answer is yes. However, using Snowflake scripting simplifies the task, makes it easy to maintain and avoid version dependency what we have seen in Python or Snowpark and other programming construct which can be used for the stored procedure development. We have understood the significance of Snowflake scripting and how it enables the management of various scenarios and cases through stored procedures. The next chapter, we will explore why the use of a stored procedure is regarded as anti-pattern and some of the common problem that most of the data engineering team prefers to solve using stored procedures and their importance in the context of Snowflake data platform. After that, we will transition directly to hands-on chapter covering Snowflake scripting's building blocks and variables. If you prefer to skip ahead to the practical section, please feel free to do that. All the links for the future chapter is available in the description section below. I hope you got something valuable from this video. If you did, please hit the like button. Your support not only recognizes the work behind this free content, but also helps other to discover this playlist. And if you think it can help someone else in your team, feel free to share. Thanks for watching and let's spread the knowledge and growth together.